Right, let's give this a go. See if this works. Should do. Hopefully. Alright, it looks a little bit better. Hopefully this will work. Finally, right, we're off and running. Uh, welcome to the stream. <laughs> this was chaotic. I think I'll just do it this way in future. Right. I need to pop that live chat out so I can see you guys. How's the quality? Nice, that's better. Right, uh, just let me open my OBS. Uh, yeah, we're not getting any frame skips. Excellent. Right, so what do we want to do uh, today? Um, you guys are still talking in Discord, but I can't keep flicking between Discord and the Google and the YouTube chat. So I'd rather you guys talked in the YouTube chat if possible, because um, I can't keep flicking between the two windows. I've only got two monitors set up today. Um, let's jump over to here. And I'm not exactly looking my best, not a haircut for about three weeks. But hey ho. <clears throat> right. <clears throat> what we're gonna do today then? Uh I wanted to uh only two, yeah, only two uh, monitors unfortunately. I've not enough room on my desk for three anymore. Um Right, let's crack on then. What we're gonna do. Uh wanna do uh platform. Uh the reason why I wanted to do this and not something more advanced is because we've not really had a chance to do many live streams this year. Um so what I wanted to do uh, yeah, cheers for that. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to do was just do something real basic, back to basics, like a platformer. Um, nothing too um, advanced or intermediate. Uh, just just to level the playing field out. Maybe take you guys a little bit back as well. Some of you might be sat there thinking, you know, this is going to be boring. It's the same old stuff. It's platformer. la di da di da uh, And that's how it could end up panning out. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I think this is going to be really good because it's going to take you back a little bit um, because everybody starts out uh, build, doing their own platformers in Clicks Infusion 2.5. It's where everybody starts. I don't care who you are, where you come from. Everybody starts um, with a platformer. Everybody tries it. Everybody loves platformers. Takes us back to our childhood. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to use the platform movement object um, because as Advaith rightly points out uh, the one on the academy doesn't work for some strange reason i've re-encoded it um i've re-uploaded it and it just doesn't uh it just doesn't work i don't know what's up with it, it works on the pc it doesn't work through html5 it doesn't like it um so let's crack on uh, with what we're going to do today uh, so this stream probably going to go on for about an hour an hour and a half maybe even two hours if you're lucky um earlier on i uh created myself a little library to run off uh, which i'll share with you guys um here it is uh, i'll share this platform this uh library with you guys so you can install it and use some of the assets if you want um, all the assets are done by kenny 
uh, sort of all free assets anyway for this uh, for this particular one. Right, what we're going to do first of all, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that horrid 640x480 resolution. Uh, I'm an avid fan of 16x9 or 16x10. Depends how you look at it. Um, so let's go for something a bit more optimal. Let's go for... Um, I don't want to do 800 by 480. Let's do 1280, 720. Let's do that. Yeah, that's a bit better. Let's drag this down a little bit. Don't need to see all that. Nope. Uh, oh. I don't know. I like to see the whole frame when I'm looking at my uh, projects when I'm working on. I like to see the whole frame. Unfortunately, this monitor only supports 1080p as the max resolution. Otherwise, I'd be on the biggest resolution possible. Uh, so 1080p is not going to go down well today, so we'll stick with the 720 resolution. So we're still HD, technically. Um, right, so everybody's watching now, everybody's, uh, we're all cooking on gas, happy days. And we're not dropping any frames. So it should be a smooth, um, it should be a smooth uh, broadcast this, hopefully. Right, let's crack on. What do we do? PMO object. Let's drop that in first of all before we do absolutely anything. We'll stick them defaults in. To them. Right, let's. Uh, the first thing I want to do is drop in a quick backdrop. This can be our. I've got a sneaky feeling that this is going to be way too big of a resolution. I might just drop it down to 800 by 480 and just give me a bit more leniency when it comes to the uh, play area size. Uh, 480 down, not 840. This is a weird bug in Fusion. It's always been around forever. You've got to like resize the window and let it redraw, and even sometimes it sticks. Get off! <clears throat> right, let's try again. Right, so we're now at 800 by 480. Uh, so basically, this is not just going to be your run-of-the-mill um, basic uh, platform movement um, kind of engine. It's um, it's going to be something a little bit more than that. Um, hopefully, we can get a nice smooth game up and running within an hour. Um, and we can also implement some kind of save game system so we can load games up. And we'll try and get through as much as we can uh, in one broadcast. Uh, so hopefully it's going to go all right. Hopefully. Right, that's a nice little gradient. We'll use that. Uh, just lock that down for the time being. Let's drop Ken in. There he is. Uh, I'm going to take his first frame out of there. And we're going to use our placeholder object. So I'll paste that in there like that. It's going to be our placeholder. What I do like to do is, because there's an alpha channel assigned to this, if I drag anything over the top of this, it'll turn the outline black, which I like, just like that. So now I can distinguish which is Ken and which is going to be our placeholder. Alright, so I'm going to call this one Player. Uh, who, what's he called? Uh, Ken. We can keep Ken as Ken. Uh, let's uh, uncheck a few of these. Uh, I'm, going to use, I'm going to keep Find Detection on, because we need Find Detection. Now I can take some of the detection stuff off with Ken. I don't want to use Find Detections with him. Um, we can uncheck a few of these as well. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, let's get rid of that uh, platform movement. Uh, and that's static as well. Right. Oh, happy days. Uh, chat seems awfully quiet. I don't know whether it's meant to be. Right, first group set stuff. Real easy. Only one action, one event loops. Uh, set object to our player. Give that a quick run, see how that pans out. Happy days. Right. Let's start getting a few things in. Got this nice little tile here. Yeah, it's awfully quiet. Drop a few more pins. Okay. Didn't do enough. Let's go for nine. That was a good enough guess. Um. Oh dear me. These are active objects. 
what we're doing that drop them into as a backdrop so we're going to duplicate 20 of these you see how fast i'm working that is because i'm hoping that most of you guys already know how to do all of this i will set that as an obstacle I'm assuming most of you guys already know how to uh, do most of this um, and if it's wrong of me to assume then it doesn't matter because there's plenty of these tutorials in the academy anyway so if you're not if you're new to all this stuff uh, you can either watch how I'm doing stuff now or you can go back and slowly learn through uh, the academy um, material uh, name of group let's do player movement I used a duplication action. Right, this is where it gets uh, <clears throat> typical now. We've got to do all the usual spiel. Every time you create a platform, you've got to do all the usual things. So hopefully I can just zip through all of this. <laughs> right, so the first thing I'm going to do is that always I'm going to set the position uh, relative to this. So I'm going to run this. Does that. Excellent. <clears throat> Let's do a, a subgroup movement inside player movement. It's got to be done. Right, so uh, joystick. Uh, repeat while joystick is pressed. So we're going to move to the right. Um, then we can say that uh, on user input, user is holding the right key. Uh, we do the same, but this time for left. And then we can do input, user's holding left key. Uh, and then we do a test for ob obstacle overlap um, and we'll do this overlap in a uh, backdrop uh, we can do uh, ch -ch -ch collisions overlaps with an obstacle let's just test that there we go there are some slow accelerations going on right there Move to front. In fact, we could just make this one invisible. We don't need it. Right, uh, what else do we need? Uh, we need to detect when the user is jumping. Read joystick state, uh, fire button one, which I don't like using the shift key. Uh, I've, not, I've got a joypad here. Let me, just, let me just put this joypad in. I'm gonna use joypad today. Do, 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 do. Right, are we laughing? Remove that um, Kinder Surprise egg. Right, we're laughing. So we press fire one. It, it's actually a, a joypad I've had for a while. It's called SciTech. Um, I got it a long, long time ago. Uh, it's like your typical PlayStation 2 style analog pad. Uh, on user input, uh, jump. I'll give it a go with this joypad. I don't know whether Fusion, I don't think Fusion likes uh, plug and play stuff. Let's give it a go. Yeah, I think it does actually. I think it was Multimedia Fusion 2 where it didn't work properly. Default controls, joystick 1. Let's try that. There we go. We're cooking on gas. Limited jumps and everything. Right. Let's fiddle about with some of these. Uh, X deceleration is quite slow. Let's give that 150. Let's see how this moves about. Yep. That's dire. Dire, dire, dire. Uh, we'll increase the... Uh, X velocity as well. It defaulted to 240p. I have no idea. This is a nice little speed for us. Your planet needs you. Uh, what 
else do we need to do in here? Uh, nothing. Let's do a group for animations and get that out of the way. I've always found the interesting thing with uh, PMO is you can start tripping yourself up when you come to the animations because uh, you've got to detect for so many different things um, like is object standing on ground and all the rest of it um, and if he's not then don't play um, the stops animation which is quite crazy really um, right so object is moving add a new condition rig joystick state nope we don't want that we want repeat while joystick's pressed <laughs> uh, animation we change the animation sequence to walking um, and the same goes for left now we also need to set the directions manually as well here um, so we do direction select direction right uh, we can just drag that down there and change these so we set animation to walking and then we can just change the direction to left give that a go Perfect, look at that. Rapid is. That jump height's uh, quite weak. Let's give him a better jump strength and we'll uh, decrease the... No, we'll keep the gravity the same. Let's just give him a better jump jump strength. About 950, that should do. Uh, I'm going to increase this to 350 uh, and 470. Be a little bit quicker. That's champion. Right, let me save this. Uh, do you need to negate it now for animation stopped? Kind of, yeah, it's it's tricky because it depends what kind of movements and stuff that your player is going to be doing. But because this is quite simple at the minute, um, I think we're going to be able to get away with that. So we can just do things like, um, we'll make sure that the uh, that he's definitely stood on the ground um, and we just do object is moving. We'll just do negate. Um, hopefully we should get away with this. Uh, animation sequence stopped. So that when we stop, rapid airs again. He doesn't have a jump or a fall animation, so I'm going to create my own. I'll just pick a decent frame. That's a good one for falling, so we'll use that for falling. Um, paste it in there and flip it as well. Like that. Uh, I need one for jump. I'm going to use that for jump. Jump in. Just like that. Um, so now we can do, um, what can we do? Object states, um, object is jumping. We can just do animation, change animation sequence to jumping. Uh, and when the anim object is falling, we can do change the animation sequence to falling. Uh, these stats are looking quite good for the stream today. Um, that's better than uh, what was happening 40 minutes ago, anyway. Uh, let's just give that a try now. Should have our jump and our falling animation in there. Perfect. You know, this Ken character has got a slight resemblance of Steven. It's the guy from the forums, you know Steven, everybody knows Steven. I don't think Steven can jump this high though. Steven's the guy who did the podcast with me the other day with Mighty Mark, good guy. Good with extension development. I just wish you'd finish more. 
You never heard of him. You won't do. He's never released anything. <laughs> Swig of this. Oh, God. Right. <clears throat> what else do we need to do? Right, we can leave the PMO stuff alone for the time being. <clears throat> I've done what I need to do on that, the simple stuff anyway. Um, let's get with creating uh, <clears throat> some stuff up now. Before I start expanding the level, it's always good to um, get everything you need out of the way, um, event wise, programming wise, in this little section because you can just keep. Um, you know, testing stuff um, before you start creating big levels and then coding stuff in because you might have to run to a certain section and all that. Nobody wants that. That ain't fun for anybody. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang a score in the top right-hand corner here. I'm going to bang some lives up here. Ooh. <clears throat> um, so let's do the coin. Do the coin collection. We don't want to destroy it if it's too far from frame, and we don't want it to be inactive either. Uh, it's just a little thing I've always had. Um, we don't really need to use fine detection because there's not really much room for error uh, around the, on the transparent bits. There, you know, if he's close enough to uh, touch this section, as far as I'm concerned, he's close enough to collect it. So I, I don't really think we, you ever should check for fine detection on on uh, coins or collectibles like that. Really, if there's going to be an abundance of them, because you're just forcing too much on the. Um, onto the runtime uh, and it's it's you know uncalled for no need for it collect coin collision uh <clears throat> collision with another object uh, we're going to destroy that and we're going to add to the score i'm going to i'm going to keep to uh the built infusion uh stuff for now so we want five when that happens let's give it a go there we go, five points. We just uh, put a few of these about. Let's go for ten, and we'll give them some column spacing as well. Sweet, that'll do. Um, so what I'm going to do real shortly is. Um, I'm going to do some stuff that I would do if I was implementing uh, something like this in my, uh, if I was doing a proper all-out game. Obviously, you want a bit of polish on your games. Uh, and that's what today is all about, is just showing you a few things how I would approach um, doing it. Now, f that might be simple enough for some people. You just collect the coins and they just disappear. For me, that's not how I roll. You want a, sp a few special effects, you know, like when you collect a coin, you want it to whisk off into the background and fade away and stuff like that. That's the kind of stuff that you want. And that's the whole aim of today. Hopefully, I can show you a few ways that I would do things in Fusion 2.5, and hopefully, you can pick up on a few things as well. Um, moving platform, yeah. <laughs> I knew someone was going to say that. God, I, it always slips my mind how to do the moving platform uh, routines. It might come back to me, who knows. I'm going to put this random create in. It's an active object. Let's get rid of that. Let's create a backdrop. Uh, and it's an obstacle. Good stuff. The deceleration is a little bit slow. Don't like how long it's taking him to uh, come to a stop, but never mind. Right, so we've got that in. Uh, let's drop in some backdrop objects. Um, I actually have a cool backdrop here, actually. Look at that. What a beauty. Uh, and it's tileable as well. Yeah, that's what that's usually what I do. The coin, um, Stephen's just put one of his favourites is the coin flying towards the score and disappearing. That's, that's kind of usually what I go for as well. Um, what am I doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I need to resize this down a little bit. It's just a little bit too big for my liking. Blimey, look how big that is. Let's go for 1500. Try that. That'll do. Much better. Because I'm going to drop all this down to a lower, um, a lower layer in a second. In fact, let's do it now. 
So the backdrop's going to go on the bottom layer there. Let's get rid of that background I created before. I don't need that now. There we go. Ooh. Look at that. Surprising how fast you can do this stuff in Fusion. Let me lock that down for a second. Don't really need to do much more with that. I also like this actually. This just give me an idea that maybe we could create a bit of a shadow for Ken that follows him. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That's an idea. Maybe we'll do that if we can squeeze it in on this uh, on this live stream. Right. Uh, we'll chuck in a bush. Still working on layer one here. That's not good. Let's jump to layer two. That's where everything needs to be. I'm just going to chuck one of everything in so we can deal with it later on if we need to. Right, we're chucking a random rock. Um, I'm going to do the enemy. I'm going to do the enemies in a minute. Uh, chucking a random platform. Uh, another platform. Now this is going to be an active object so we'll get rid of that. Make it into a backdrop and um, we'll give it a platform. Property. Same with this. Uh, these were these were active objects because I used them for uh, a tutorial um, animals I think it was or coin run or it was either coin run or jump jump I think it was jump jump as well um, and it used physics so it's always good to have, let me just try this now and see what uh, I like it. Not high enough to get up there. Ooh. Not a fan of that sticking either. Look at that. That's because of his arm. And his head. <laughs> so if you ever wondered how you would deal with that, let's deal with it right now. The way the reason why that happens is because it goes off this collision mask here. Um and this collision mask ideally needs to be thinner um than what um the actual um Collision mask should be so. What you do is uh, go down and do the red. We're going to do this section here in red. This is the ideal section um, for collision. We don't need to detect collision outside of this area. I don't mind if his head overlaps a backdrop slightly, it's not going to be an issue. Um, so we can just get the oh, the eraser tool doesn't work on this section. So what we can do is we can single out this red section here you know, just like that. And when we can create a new, well, what we can do actually is we can just up here, not here, up at this little uh, transparency uh, section here, we can just change it to transparent color, just like that. So now I can knock out the black areas. There we go. We'll give it a go this time. See, the collision works. But he doesn't get stuck this time because his head's not getting stuck on the platform. Because it's just a straight collision mass now. These head overlaps the box a little bit, but who cares? Sometimes that's a good effect. You're not going to land on that platform there because it's not set as a backdrop. No problem. Let me get rid of the heading uh, and the menu. Because that's annoying. Um, this platform here, let's rename it to... Uh, let's not rename it. Let's just create a quick backdrop out of that or a backdrop object. There we go. Not renaming the backdrops as well. I didn't give it a an obstacle platform property. Right. Um, what do we need to do now? Let's do the coin effect. I want to do the coin effect right now. Um, I want to get that out of the way. It's, you can create some real, real cool effects. Uh, with stuff like that. Um, so, how would I um, go about um, doing this? Um, let me think off the top of my head. I would do it. Sometimes it's better to do it with a movement. Sometimes it's not. Um, Let's give the coin uh, a fade val property. Keep it at that for now. 
uh, and we can create two movements let's try and keep it on a basic level i don't want to go too advanced in this tutorial so i was i was going to do it a different way but i'm going to do it um you know a bit of more of an easier way so you just create a secondary movement inside here uh, and you would just give it something like the bouncing ball movement uh, you'd knock the speed down let's just knock it down to um 15 for now just so we know that it's going to work um we'll turn the randomizer down uh, and we'll bring the security up yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing, Stephen. Yeah, bouncing ball movement. So handy for so many different things in Fusion. Uh, right, so this is what we're going to do to trigger it. Um, so now, rather than do destroy, we're going to have a trigger. Just like that. Um, and all we have to do is when we touch the coin, we set the trigger to one so that means now that we have to stipulate in here that when we collide with the coin and trigger is zero then we set trigger to one uh, so what happens when trigger is one um, the first thing we need to do is uh, change the um, multiple movements um, just go to the next movement now this uh, event is going to keep um, triggering and triggering every single frame and we don't want that to happen so we can add in a new condition which compares the movement um, um, movement number um, so if it's equal to zero um, let's just um, I'll trigger my movement uh, um, now we can create another one that says um, is the fade value no, we want it. We want, I think we should get it to touch the score, and when it touches the score, then it fades. So the first trigger, trigger one, is going to set the movement off. So it's going to go next movement, um, and it's going to go trigger one. We're going to say look in the direction of player score. Then we can say if it collides with another object, player score, and trigger is one, then we can set trigger to two. <clears throat> excuse me then when trigger is two we can just do add two fade val um, we can add two let's just do two for now uh, and we can just do effect <clears throat> semi transparency uh, fade val Then we can just look for fade val being uh, greater or equal to one to eight. And then we can destroy it. So this should work. I mean, there's probably going to be a few room for, bit of room for error. So let's give it a go. You can see now that it makes its way up to the score. We're going to speed this up a little bit in a minute. And when it touches the score, it should just fade away. There we go. It's not fading away fast enough. So what we can do is we can get the object to stop. Let's give that a go. perfect look at that absolutely perfect um just want to increase the speed of the object go for uh 40 40 should be roughly enough yeah needs to be a bit quicker than that as well i think because when you're going to be scrolling along in your levels it's going to have to try and catch up uh to where that is let's go for 65 perfect look at that So it's literally taken two or three minutes literally took two or three minutes to create that kind of effect in fusion uh, i still think it needs to be a bit quicker i'm going to set it to 90 because when we're scrolling it needs to really get up to that score i think it needs to fade a little bit faster as well we can easily uh, modify that in here where we add two to the fade val we can just add six let's try that Oops, uh, one second. Just bear with me two seconds, guys. Uh, we've got someone who is not on the live stream. 
She wants the link, so I'm going to sort her out with that link. Hopefully she'll get that. Second. <laughs> yeah, that call was loud. That was a loud call. Uh, don't worry about that, Joe. Um, I'll release the MFA at the end of this. Uh, and obviously this stream will be archived as well, so you can keep watching it. It's not a problem. I'm just going to check that Erica made it all right to the stream. I wish. Had too many too many dominoes lately. I just realised the webcam's capturing my bad side. Right, I think we're done. I think she's with us. I think we're all right. Okay, Erica, she made it. She made it. Great stuff. Welcome to the live stream, Erica. Right, cool. I can lock that down now. Um, let me try and see if I can turn off um, notifications um, for that. Just for the time being. Uh, mute tab, there we go. Right, let's get back to business. Right, where are we up to? Awesome. Right, this works real good. Look at that. It's perfect. Um, if you've just joined us, um, like Erica has, don't worry if you think you've missed anything. Uh, this stream you can rewatch it again. It'll be archived as a video, um, and I'll ensure that I put it in the Academy Hub um, for everyone to uh, check out. Right, so that's a nice uh, little coin effect there. That background stands out just a little bit too much for my liking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, change the blend coefficient slightly uh, on the frame. Ooh, that could work. I like it. Right, what else do we need to do? Um, we need to sort out the scrolling. That's definitely one thing that we need to do so we can have longer levels. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. No, let's not go ahead and do that now. Let me implement um, some of the enemies. Uh, one of the easiest tricks in the book when it comes to enemies is to create two um, active objects that um, kind of give direction for the enemy and you can just use the bouncy ball movement. You could use a path movement if you want, um, but I prefer being a little bit more flexible um, with things like that. So what I'm going to do is let's implement scrolling. Let's do that. So we'll create another group. Scrolling. So we'll do always. Um, scrolling, center position, play field. We don't want it to be player. <laughs> I got lost then. I was looking for the black Ken. This is the red box now. 
Excellent. Right, let's expand the size of this frame. Path movement's always good. I think for this enemy, I used the path movement in the jump jump tutorial. Um, just because it was supposed to be like a beginner tutorial. So I wanted to make sure that, it, you know, it wasn't over complicated. But let's get this guy moving between these two blocks. Right, so this is what... Um, this is what I usually use. Um, it's the fast, the faster approach. Um, it's just quite simply a box. It's an active object, like so. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there's a few people that have used this routine quite often. I'll just give it a simple arrow effect. Uh, Right, so go right. We could put that over the top of this. Right, so now we need to ensure that we do stuff like um, uncheck these kind of properties destroy object if too far from the frame and inactive if too far from window and the reason for that and we'll take off find detection as well and the reason for that is because the bigger your level is if you've got them kind of properties checked then what's going to happen is when you're at the beginning of the level fusion is not the runtime is not going to render uh, what is x amount of pixels away from you and what's going to happen is your enemies are no longer going to collide with these uh, colliding objects and they're going to start coming to I'll explain, I'll explain once we get this working. Let's get this working first, and then I'll be able to show you how uh, exactly what I mean. But what I'm saying is, when you've got any detectors for your enemies, uh, same with the enemy, make sure that you uncheck these kind of objects, uh, these kind of properties as well. Um, you must, must, must make sure that you uncheck destroy your objective too far from frame and inactive if too far from window. Right, let's flip this horizontally. Um, and this is go left. Got that over there. All right. Um, so real, real easy. Um, let's do an enemy control group so we can control the enemies. Enemy control. Always good to keep everything grouped. Uh, and we just simply do. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to group this guy into um, the enemies qualifier. That's so that if I introduce some new enemies, I can group them into the qualifier. I don't have to rewrite the code. Um, so collisions with another object specifically, right? Uh, we can just simply do direction, select direction, go right. Um, same again, but this time for left. Um, and we can just simply do bounce the object to the left so as you can see the collision between enemies and go right we're telling the enemy to go right by setting its direction to right um, and same goes for left when it collides with the go left active uh, we set the direction of the enemy to the left let's give this a go see what happens and he doesn't move because we've not assigned him any movement so let's do that right now bouncing ball I reckon 8 should be a good good enough speed. Uh, initial direction needs to be left or right. Uh, we'll crank down um, these. The randomizer, definitely not. Definitely not. We don't want to randomize any angle. Uh, in fact, we need to turn the security off as well because if it starts going left or right too much, Fusion will fly it off in a completely random different direction. So let's give this a go now. As you can see, when our enemy collides with the go right, it goes right. When the enemy collides with the goal left, it goes left. One of the oldest tricks in the book. I thought I was playing Mario for a second with the black black edge. That works uh, good enough for me. Um, let's speed that up a little bit. Let's double the speed to 16. Excellent. So what you can do now is you can make these objects invisible by unchecking visible at start and now we can use these throughout the entire level we don't have to record anything all we have to do is drop these in um, at will that's all we have to do uh, right now back to the scrolling layers uh, you can see that we've introduced uh, a new layer here 
uh, which is where our backdrop here, our background is um, set to. Uh, so again, what as long now if the frame, if the um, layer two is our game layer, that's going to be at the default speed of 1.0. It just means everything's at normal speed. So what we want is the background to run um, at a slower pace than what the foreground does. So all we have to do with the x and y coefficients of layer one is modify them so they are below um, 1.0 so let's go for 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 on the Y so now as we move along our background moves at a different speed it's much much slower and because this background is tileable all I have to do is um, I'll tell you where I did slip up. I can create a quick backdrop object. Uh, it's 1500, 750. 1500, uh, 750. And we'll put that uh, at no 1500 on the width and 750 on the height. There we go. Perfect. I uh, need to change the blend coefficient again. There we go. Ah, let's make it a little bit darker. Perfect. Um, give it a whirl. Now, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, because it's now a quick backdrop object, um, I can now just expand this by doing this. There we go. And we can just have an unlimited length on the x-coordinate so let's make our frame slightly bigger now let's make it 2800 see we're running out of uh, tiles so let's duplicate some more of these Go for 30 well, that was a good uh, good little guess let's just I just want to try the background out let's make sure that's working all right Great. So one of the other things uh, that I wanted to implement, obviously at this moment in time, we need to ensure that we do the enemy detection. Uh, one of the things I wanted to implement was uh, a kind of kickback or a knockback feature. Um, so when you've collected uh, X amount of coins uh, and you collide with the enemy, um, that you kind of get stunned from the enemy, you flash a little bit, you lose your coins, you've got a chance to pick them up. Uh, within a certain time so I think we should do that right now so let's give that a shot um, so the first thing I need to do is create a value for our player this don't forget this is just the uh, animated player holder this is the actual player object uh, so we can just call that stun this is how I would approach it um, again I haven't done this in a while so it might be a little bit rusty let's see what happens um, so we've got stun do enemy collision so you've got to be careful with some of this because um, it can start affecting some of the other animations and your player groups like this all right but this is really really um, we can figure all that out as we go along right so what do we do the first thing that we do is we check um, that the player score from here compared to player score um, it's definitely greater than zero ie you've picked up some coins if you haven't uh, then you're gonna um, you're gonna die you're not gonna be able to continue you're not gonna be able to get stunned or knocked back um, so we've got to ensure that score is above zero we've also got to make sure the stun already equals zero and then we can do the uh, collision detection so here we go so we go uh, we can just in fact we can just we don't even have to do it through the PMO we can do it through um, using our Ken on the basic Ken um, so we can just overlap with another object so a collision between Ken and this then we can set our stun to 1 alright so what's going to happen when stun is 1 ok well the first thing that needs to happen is we need to disable our movement group then we need to deactivate our animation group as well 
so we can just create another event here that says when stun is zero we can activate um, the movement group and we can activate the animations group now this event is going to keep repeating so to ensure that it doesn't all we have to do is just check that movement is not activated that's all we have to do um, so then it doesn't keep repeating um, that over and over in fact we can put that up there I don't know it's gonna be it's gonna be zero more than one so it's probably best to have the group movement is activated at the top then it just renders that event useless because um, most of the time stun is gonna be zero all right so we can pop that up there so stun is one let me just check that this collision uh, detection works so we should stop moving when we collide with the enemy there we go all right so, um, one thing that we don't need to happen is uh backdrop so i'm going to move this outside the player movement group because we don't want to fall through the floor just because we've touched an enemy let's try that there we go <laughs> all right so i'm going to grab one of his animations i'm going to create a knockback animation let me see if i can find one in the walking sequence Right, I'm going to use that, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Um, what do we need to create? Uh, let's do a new animation. Um, dot back. Okay, let's just leave that for now. Let's just go with that. Um, all right so the first thing we need to do is stun equals um zero uh sorry stun equals one uh we just do only one action one event loops on that um stun equals one um right so what do we need to happen let me just run it i'm going to start running it and stopping it a few times here while i try and collate in my head what we need to do uh, right so we've managed to stop the movement we need to change the animation the first thing that we need to do um so we do animation change uh, animation sequence to not back let's try that okay that's okay that's strange it's not picking up the collision detection ah oh, right there we go but now it has so stun equals one uh change the animation sequence to not back um uh, now we need to play about with um some of the um p m o stuff here we go so we need to do um some kind of cool down feature i'm gonna call it stun up there's a reason for um this um, so stun equals one we're always going to add one to stun up so every frame we're going to add one to stun up all right this is going to give us a bit of leeway to do some um, crazy stuff with the pmo but not too much where it lingers on too long so we'll do stun up if it's lower than 60 that gives us a full second of game time to do something uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to knock um, our player back uh, from where he's um, originally originally stood uh, from so I'm going to try and keep this as basic as I, I possibly can for you um, so I'm going to say direction uh, if he if he's facing right then we need to ensure um, that we that we remain right when we get knocked back so what we do is we can actually force um, our own jump here uh, we can change a few of the variables as well uh, we can pretty much do whatever we want to do here to force our player to do something which is out of the player's control uh, which is excellent i love that kind of stuff um so what do we need to do um we need to first of all um set additional x velocity now we know he's facing right so we can do a minus on this so let's do a minus 100 um let's do uh, additional y velocity um let's do uh, 100 on that uh, and let's do a user jump well, let's see how we get on with that for one second it's been a while since i've done this routine so 
Okay. <laughs> okay, went quite far there. Let's set this a little bit lower. Let's go for 25. Okay. That's quite a knockback. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. We'll knock this down a little bit as well. Um, okay, this guy's going on forever. The reason why that's happening is because um, it's it's constantly jumping. And the reason why it's constantly jumping is because this is always true. Um, so what I can do is I can knock that down to 30. Still way, way, way too high. Um, so let's drop that down to 10. That's going to give us 10 frame ticks of a jump. Still might be a little bit too high, that. No, that's not too bad. Let's go for 5. There you go. Now... Awesome. Now we need to ensure that um, our player um, ha re regains control after a certain amount of time. So what I'm just first of all going to do is I'm just going to change this to um, left. If he's facing left, uh, we'll change that to 150 and we can keep all the rest the same. Um, we just need to make sure that direction select direction is right so we just need to make sure because we can we close our um, movement and animation control group so we just need to make sure that fusion is going to apply the right directions to these that is strange what's going on there I don't understand why doesn't that work that's weird look at that why is that not working not detecting the collision at all oh I know why it's because we didn't collect any coins my bad you look if you look at this uh, event that we did here we had to make sure that we have some coins because if you don't have any coins you're not getting knocked back all right so that works let me try and from the right hand side oh we've no coins come on Better. A bit of lag there on that. Alright, that'll do. That'll do for me. Um, so, the first thing that needs to happen is we set stun to 1, and then we need to flash our player. Um, so we can just do uh, 15. That should be about right. Let's just check that that works. Oh, we're, we're flashing the wrong object. Flash. Ken, don't flash the uh, placeholder. Try that. Okay. Let's not. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Hang on. I'll delete the flash from there because we need, still need to set stun to one. Let's try that now. There we go. Perfect. So as you can see, I haven't regained control yet um, of our player Ken. Um, it's really easy to do. Let me just show you something in the debugger really quickly here. Um, as you can see, we've got this stun and stun up. Just keep your eye on them two values right now. Um, because what's going to happen is as soon as we collide with this enemy, stun is going to go to 1 and stun up is going to count upwards. Can you see? So all we have to do is set a time from when stun up um, gets to a certain level, we can regain control to our user. Um, so we can easily do that in, in just one single event. Um, so we can do um, if stun up equals one, uh, if stun equals one, and then stun up um, is greater or equal than, let's say 30, that's half a second in game time. <clears throat> um, then we can just simply set stun to zero. 
um, and stun zero here this this will reactivate all this uh, kind of group here we need to stop him from flashing as well uh, and all we do for that simply is just go to animation uh, visibility mech objects reappear let's give that a go all right so we're going to collide with him now movement 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 uh, we still don't have any movement why not <clears throat> It's because I'm looking for stun instead of stun up on the. Can you see? Let's give that a try again. There we go. So we that's a, that's too that's too slow of a flash. I think. I think we should have some more. Um, a longer of a stun. So I think this should be ninety. Give that a go. See now, or <laughs> it's still applying a minus um, x and y velocity to me, um, and that's the uh, the reason why is we have to reset that because in the PMO it's going to stick. Um, so we can just reset that back. Uh, what were our default values? Um, nil <clears throat> so we can just basically drag this down here we can delete the jump because we're not jumping anymore um, so we can just set this to none and none um, and do that if we don't do that it's going to keep resetting these to none so we'll never be able to use them again so we don't want that to happen try this again so we've got stunned we're not back and we regain full control of our player. Let's try it from this side. Oh, okay. It's not going to work again because I've not got any coins. We forgot to reset the score as well. So let's reset the score um, when we collide. So set score zero. Okay, so our score is back to zero. Um, and it's not going to pick up the, the collision detection because I don't have any coins. Okay, it's still not picking up the uh, collision detection. Why not? Stun does go back to zero. We need to um, minus stun up. Reset stun up back to zero as well. There we go. Fiddly things, aren't they? Okay, this is not going to work. Let me try this. There we go. I just needed a few of them coins. There we go, not back. The game movement again. Uh, and we don't have any coins, so let's go and get some more coins. And not back again. Okay, uh, what's going on here? We don't have any coins, so I need to get coins. So we need coins to do the knockback effect. The reason why I've done that is because when you don't have any coins and you collide with the enemy, you're going to die and you're going to respawn. Um, so that's pretty much um, all done with. So what we need to do is we copy this event down here and we do collision between uh, the player and the enemy and score e is equal or lower than zero and stun is zero. Then we do our reset. Um, kind of thing so uh, we'll set score to zero anyway even though it's, no we don't need to do that we can just do um, what can we do we can do um, let's do it real simple for now um, let's subtract one from uh, the player lives Um, let's reposition <coughs> Ken in the player field, play area, there we go, just try that, let's we'll keep it real simple for now, so we collide with the enemy, now we have no coins left and when we collide with him this time it's going to take one off but it didn't reposition him, it didn't reposition him, and the reason why it didn't reposition him is because we're repositioning the Ken object and we shouldn't be doing that. We should be positioning, repositioning the player object. Let's give that a go. So we collide, we do our knockback, and then we collide again. 
and then we lose a life and we respawn and we just keep doing that until we have no lives left we'll deal with that later on perfect right now what's the second thing i want to show you about this um we want kind of like a sonic kind of thing where um when you collide with the enemy um all your coins kind of throw out everywhere and uh you know you've got to um you've got to pick them up uh, if you don't pick them up after a certain time they'll diminish and they'll disappear um so the way i handle this uh, myself is to cr is to clone the objects into a new object all right now um I don't, we don't have a spinning animation which is a bit of a shame because it would look so much better with a spinning animation but it doesn't matter um i used to like using the pinball movement for um for this i don't know whether any of you guys have used the pinball movement for this but it is quite good um so we don't create at start uh, and we just basically effectively create a fast loop to run um when we collide so i'm going to give you an example of that right now um we just need to look for the event where we do the collision which is here um so we can just do start loop um, create coins um how many um coins do we want to create well what we can do is we can get the current value of score and we can half it um if you've got 99 or 100 coins that means you're going to be creating 50 coins in a fast loop and that's not going to be good so we could even go down to as far as um, a quarter but for this um, we'll do half so let's do the create coins in a subgroup all right first thing we do is we capture a loop create coins um, and it's just real 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 simple um, we just create coin two so we'll do create object um, in relation to player, not the animation. Oops, uh, one second. Create object coin two at the player. There we go. Um, then we need to do direction, select direction, and we'll give it a random direction. Because we're using the pinball movement, it looks quite cool when you use this kind of effect. Let's just give that a shot, see what happens for now. Okay, love it, love it when a plan comes together. Right, where are you? Why, why are you not spawning? Coin two, I definitely created coin two. Someone's going to correct me on this. No, it won't, it won't, it won't, um, oh yes it will. No, you're right because the score we're adding five someone's just pointed out it's going to create more um more more coins than we've um collected no you're right um so what we need to do then is um we'll do mod five so for everyone i'm not understanding why it's not creating the um objects here though at this point that doesn't make sense Got loop create coins, uh, on loop create coins. Hmm. Let me just run it a preset amount of times first. Let's figure out why this. There we go. There's our coins. Giving it a bad loop. Um, so here's where uh, the maths comes into play now. So we take the current value of the score. Uh, we need to um, we need to work this out. Well, let's just we could just do um, we're doing five for every one. Then what we could do is divide it by five. Let's try that. We get five points for every uh, every coin. Too much. Check. We're definitely adding to score here, aren't we? Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. 
We're setting the score to zero before we run the loop. That's a very, very um, silly mistake to make. Um, one that's easily done in Fusion as well. So that's why the loop wasn't running because we're telling it to run uh, the amount of score times um, and then dividing it by a particular number. Um, but we were setting the score to zero before the loop. So order of events, order of actions, uh, always very important. So now we are definitely going to have some action <laughs> in relation to creating some coins. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, need a bit of speed to them coins because they're not really going up anywhere. So let's set um, the speed up to um, fi 50. What did I set the initial speed to in the properties? 29. I think 50 is going to be a bit better. Let's try it. There we go. That's much better. Um, now we need some events for our coins. Um, so we need to create them now. So we need to do uh, collisions with backdrop and stuff like that. So we just do movement stop. Try that again. So now they shouldn't disappear just off the screen. There we go. So they've actually stopped uh, and planted themselves in the ground. We don't want that. Let's do movement bounce. We can change um, them to slow down over time with a couple of events. You can see the minute they're bouncing and we keep dying. Um, so you'll notice that there's way too much bounce in them. They just keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing the whole time. Um, so we can tweak that slightly uh, with a bit of deceleration here. Drop that to five. Let's give that a shot. Might need a little bit more deceleration. Um, yeah, if you look at this coin here... Um, there is a weird movement thing going on with the uh, pinball. The pinball, th it's really weird to, to fathom what it is. It's a fusion bug. I've spent countless hours trying to fix that up myself in fusion, but you can't really do much with it, fortunately. Now, as you can see with the coins, they remain there until you collect them again. We don't want that. So what we can do is um, time to live let's give it a time to live counter um, so we can handle this in our create coins group so basically all we do is our event will be pick or count compare to the number of coin to objects if there is more than zero then we add to the time to live um, let's add two to the time to live let's do one for now it's going to give us about two seconds if I do 128 on the um, and then we can do effect set semi transparency to TTL uh, and then we can just simply check for is TTL greater or equal than 128 we can just destroy the object now uh, we haven't got anything in here to say that we can collect a coin uh, just like we did um, with um, the first lot of coins because the two different objects these are our standard coins these are our animated coins um, now some people might say well you know you could have created another event for um, another movement for the first slot of coins but i don't think that's the right way to go because we're handling two different lots of things here we've got this time to live uh, thing for example on here we don't want to be uh, messing about too much uh, with one object so just to keep it nice and basic um for any beginners that are watching out there it's, it's nice just to um, you know just create a clone why not fusion can handle it but why not um Right, what do we need to do then? We need to be able to collect this coin. Um, now, you can do this one of two ways. You can do the first way is you just collect the coin, it just adds to the score and it disappears. Or you can replicate um, all these events uh, that happened in here. I don't want to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because we've already covered that, so if you want to do that, you can go ahead and do that. But we've already covered that in this uh, live stream anyway. Um, so we can just now simply do... Um, collisions with another object coin two uh, we just do everything that we did for the first lot um, add five to the score but we're just going to destroy the coin this time we're not going to mess about with anything else we've got a few coins 
Uh, where did the coins go? Okay, let's go and collect these. There's a bit of lag there on them collisions. I don't understand what's going on there. Alright, where's our coins? Right, this is what's happening. Um, the coins are colliding instantly with Ken. Um, so he's collecting them. So that's what's happening there. Um, so this is really easy to fix. We've got a time to live on the coins. So all we have to do is just check that there's a collision between Ken and the coin 2. And we just also compare the time to live is greater or equal than say 30. And that gives the coin chance to move away from the Ken object before we detect the collection. Uh, before we detect the collision just like that. There you go. So the reason why it wasn't spawning uh, the coins prior was it was spawning them, but it was instantly collecting them because it was colliding with Ken straight away. And now we're using the time to live to uh, to get rid of that. But there you go, it's absolutely perfect. Look at that. I'm not understanding what that lag's all about. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen that before. That's a bit of a strange one for me. I'll tell you what that lag might be about. It's definitely not a fusion thing. It's going to be something to do with these triggers here. Um, that's what it's going to be. Fusion's trying to iterate through all of them objects. You'll notice the faster I collect these objects, well, we can collect, say, this lot. Then we can do the collision and we go back and collect some more and you'll notice now that there'll be, there might be a bit of lag on this. As you can see there. Right, let's expand slightly on the frame. So we've got a big enough frame here. Let me just check something a second. Hopefully the feed's uh, good enough quality for you. I'm not sure what it's like. I can't really see it at the moment, um, but hopefully it's not awful. Um, the best thing about this kind of quality feed is I'm not dropping any frames, which is good. Um, because the last thing, I think the quality um, is much better than... Uh, does it only happen when moving left? Um, I have no idea. Let's give it a shot. Right, so we lose some coins. Let's jump over these so I can collect them from the right. Yes, it does. <laughs> it would appear. Yes, it does, funnily enough. The lag only appears when you're running to the left. Check these enemies out. These are from another tutorial which I've done. I don't know whether it's available on the academy. I did it for um, I did this tutorial for a lot of kids um, so that kids could make fusion games, and it was like a space invaders game, which I thought was quite cool. Um, not sure what I can do with this guy in a platform game. Maybe we can get him to drop some uh, some kind of bombs, something like that. But the beauty about um, everything that we've coded so far, we're, we're still in less than 50 events and that's including groups, uh, which we've got quite a few of. Uh, the, the best thing about all this now is we can um, start creating uh, a bit more of a better level. I'm just going to lock that backdrop. 
But we can do stuff like this. And again, um, we can put an enemy up here now um, because all we have to do is just put our invisible detectors that say go right and go left at the edges of the platforms just like this. We might not be able to jump up to that. Oh, I've put them all on, uh, on the first layer. Should not be working on layer one. Another common pitfall, forgetting which layer you're working on. Never a good thing. Layer two. There we go. Right, everything else is all right. So yeah, so anyway, back to uh, business. What I was showing you was we can now create additional platforms like this. Um, this guy is not moving because I dragged him in from down here. Instead of here. So we had no movement set. Now he's got the bouncing ball movement as he should do. There we go. And there he is. And there's our knockback. And there's our collect a coin feature. Awesome. Start putting a few more of these in. So what you can do with stuff like this is you can change the heights because you can just order it and send it to the back like so. You can have different heights. Order centre back. Sonic is jealous. The rings in Sonic disappear faster than that. <laughs> Oops, don't want to do that. Perfect. Get a bit of grass on as well while we're here. So you can see how fast and how easy it is to develop your levels in Click Team Fusion. I have yet to see any other frame or level editor which is as fast as this where you can access the code straight away. I've not really tested many others out to be honest, uh, but from what I've seen, it's hard to come across. I'm going to get rid of that, that's awkward. Uh, let's get a few more of these set up. Could do with working to a grid really, when you're doing anything like this. Um, but as you get more advanced in Fusion 2.5, you can create your own level editors. If you look through the Academy Hub, there's already uh, a lengthy tutorial which I created on how you can do your own level editors, how you can create your own uh, level editors in Fusion 2.5. So definitely worth a look at if you get a bit of time later on. Check that out. Oh, so close. So close to guessing the height on that. So that's a little bit better. It's starting to come together a little bit more now. I think we've covered quite a bit in that. Um, and thankfully we now have a new 
platform movement object <laughs> tutorial to replace that old one which wouldn't work for some strange reason it works on my pc but yeah it wasn't working on the academy website i'm not sure why it kept saying file not found and yet the file is there it's strange it's just weird um, it's one of those technical things that there's nothing much you can do about um there's obviously something wrong with the encoding on it um the problem is if you can't change the original encoding then re-encoding it usually doesn't work without the source files properly anyway But that is groovy i mean the beauty about this kind of um, game engine which we've created here is you could probably instantly test this um on mobile and it'll probably work um quite efficiently you'd have to set up because it's a platform movement you'd have to set up you know like the little on screen um joypad um but aside of that everything should work uh, quite fine uh, everything's all native to fusion we've not used any um extensions which are out of the scope for android uh, and that kind of thing but yeah i'm a fan i'm a fan of platformers um i've been checking out sprite a lot lately what um vol nice from the uh, clicking forums has been working on i think he's doing an excellent job with that and i can't wait until there's at least a playable demo i can get my hands on because he's done a really really good job um of sprite really good i like it but that's cool now i've got a new platformer um, that I can use uh, as a base on the academy for people to work off. Uh, this video is going to be available uh, in the archives um, and I'll also publicly release it to YouTube as well uh, so people can get it. Um, I'll put the download on the academy uh, website with this uh, library and so you guys can grab it. Uh, but yeah, um, I think we can leave it at that for now. Uh, is, does anybody have any questions um, before we drop that off? Because what I might do is I might resume this tutorial on the next live stream uh, once I've got some ideas from you guys and I know what we, you know what we can work on next, um, like the moving platforms. Um, I want to do a save and load system as well um, and all that kind of stuff. So if there's any questions from anybody uh, before we drop this uh, live stream. I'd be more than happy to uh, to answer them for you. Any ideas on what you want to work on next time? We'll do definitely cover moving platforms uh, and the save and load system, I think, definitely. You're welcome, man. Hopefully we can... Um, hopefully I can speak to uh, our guy, uh, Triadian, to see how we could maybe implement something like this in Firefly. Um, I really do need to spend a bit more time with Firefly, but it's just finding time. Time is of the essence. Uh, just doesn't, I just don't seem to be able to ever have enough time um, or even create time. Um, it's such hard work. I just wish I had more time for Firefly, but it'd be interesting to see how we could run a tutorial like this um, and change it off into, um, into Firefly. There's got to be some kind of um, conversion there's some kind of way we can sneakily convert something like this into a firefly project um, we can do um a rope swing i'd have to modify a couple of the animations but i reckon i can i can do that no problem so i'll modify a couple of the animations for next time so we can do a rope swing yeah most of that would work the same way yeah i had a, I had a sneaky feeling it probably would I mean, <clears throat> looking at the event sheet, the event sheet, um, how I've managed to do everything is, um, you'll have noticed, If you, a couple of more of the intermediate users will have noticed that um, I've gone around the house a few times um, to do, um, to achieve a few things. Um, at the minute, we're looking at how many events, uh, well, it's saying 
50 uh, but don't forget a few of these are groups as well so you're probably looking at about 40 events I, uh, an advanced level i probably could have had all this covered in you know half the events 20 maybe 25 um but i really don't want to be doing that too much with these live streams especially just yet i want to make sure that i can get as much beginner stroke going into intermediate content out of the way first and then you know there'll become a day when um, on the live streams we're just doing the advanced stuff because everybody will pretty much be at that level um, you enjoy your food Liam I need some food I'm really hungry thanks for joining me on this stream tonight guys uh, I've really enjoyed doing it uh, sorry about the blip at the, at the beginning but it's just teething problems it's going to happen uh, yeah but thank you um, to each and every one of you for taking part in it it's been good um, I can't wait to do the next one um, I'll see you soon